The Second Vatican Council is often misunderstood and can elicit a wide variety of reactions. Some credit it with bringing the church into the modern era. Others believe that it's the reason for many of the changes that have removed significant aspects of tradition and is ultimately responsible for the falling away of so many from the faith. On this 60th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council, we wanted to dive deeper and see what the main takeaways were of the council. So we sat down with Father John Walk, professor at Rome's Pontifical University of the Holy Cross. Father John Walk, it's great to see you and thank you very much for giving us your time. Good to be here today. Bring us back and remind us why was this council called and how momentous was this occasion? I think in order to understand the council, you have to think of the situation of especially Europe and the church after the two world wars of the first part of the century. So there was a sense that we're starting again in the, in the late 1950s. The, uh, the wars were over and the church was looking around at the world and say, we, we need to begin again in our relationship with the world that's the new world that we find ourselves living in. And the church obviously has been around for 2000 years, but there's a sense that this is a new epoch that's beginning and we, we need to adjust ourselves, open ourselves to this, the new reality of the world uh, today. And what were some of the challenges that they were trying to address or problems they were trying to fix? Because as you said, post-World War II, uh, the world had peace, what it longed for. Uh, the church kind of in those decades was at a golden age, great attendance, lots of seminarians coming in. So what was the, the problem? The, the, the council wasn't really about addressing challenges. It was about taking advantage of opportunities that I, I think the, the peace time after the World Wars was seen as an, a golden opportunity for the church to engage with the world. And the, the church was blessed with many vocations at that time. There were great artists and intellectuals who were Catholic living and, and active in that, in that period. And I think the council is actually a product of not concern about challenges, but about optimism about opportunities. Well, you know, a key part of the, the message of Lumen Gentium, that dogmatic constitution on the church, was chapter five, which is about the universal call to holiness. And the idea was that every single Christian, by virtue of being baptized, was actually called to the perfection of charity and the perfection of the fullness of the Christian life. There is holiness. Father John, why do you think it still is today that many Catholics around the world look at the Second Vatican Council. Some embrace the spirit of it, while others still look at it with suspicion. Well, I think if you, if you read the documents of the Council, you'll come away with a very different impression than you would get from the way people talk about the Council. Uh, the way the Council was presented in the media, from the Council dovetailed with a cultural revolution in society that also affected the life of the church. And so it's very hard, I think, for people to separate out what is exactly the council and what is the implementation of the council, the consequences in society and in the church after the council. Are those caused by the council? Are they coincidence? Or, I mean, they all, it all goes together as sort of the 1960s and 70s, which was a very traumatic time because after that great period of hope, in the, in the 50s I was talking about, the, we're gonna be engaged with the modern world. It seemed like the modern world was running roughshod over the church and, and you know, priests and nuns were leaving their vocations and there was a drop in vocations to the priesthood. There was doctrinal confusion. There was protest against the traditional teachings of the church about sexuality, for instance, and humanae vitae. All of that happened at once. And it's not in the text of the council that the, pro the problem is really after, after the council. This was happening in society at large when so many things were kind of up for grabs in the, in, throughout these decades. Uh, you mentioned the media coverage, which is fascinating around the Second Vatican Council because we know today, unfortunately, uh, we have a very polarized news media in many parts of the world, particularly the United States. But this w was even the case back then, wasn't it? When we kind of saw for the first time this divide, where did you stand in the church? how it was interpreted and also the people involved, uh, the cardinals and so on, were put into different brackets, kind of for the first time publicly. The, the Second Vatican Council was the first you know, 
television era council, first radio era, era for in, or as well, but it was, a, it was the first council that was conducted in a context of modern media coverage. Constant daily reporting was possible. And it was quite natural that people would take advantage of that. People who had their own agenda of what they thought the church should be doing or where the church should be going. And, and it wasn't just the media. I mean, sometimes people blame the media for the misinterpretation of the council, but the media was being used by people often in the council. In other words, not necessarily cardinals or bishops, but frequently the people around them, the so-called periti, the experts, they would have informal press conferences basically guiding the, the media coverage. To the meaning of a, a so piece of a document they, or something. As like. counselors to the, the fathers of the council, they were counselors to the, they had their ideas and their agenda, and they were selling that to the journalists. So in a certain sense, you could say that the journalists were actually being used by people in the council. I mean, the, it wasn't simply the, the media, the outside media was to blame for you know, mishandling the council. They were being guided also by people within the council. Father John Mock, it was a pleasure talking to you and thank you very much for your time. It was all mine. Thank you.